lock and load. The JRTC opposing force is a highly trained and motivated unit charged with being the most uncompromising force any United States unit will face short of actually going to war. The OP-4 capabilities are built around an airborne infantry battalion. In its headquarters company, the OP-4 has a scout platoon that conducts dismounted, motorcycle, and mounted patrol. The OP-4 has two airborne infantry companies and one cavalry troop. The cavalry troop mans the visually modified M551 Sheridans that replicate T-62s and ZSU-23-4s. The OP-4 receives a significant amount of augmentation each rotation in order to generate the combat power necessary to attack a Blue 4 Brigade Task Force. This augmentation includes the OP-4 aviation support. OP-4 Aviation includes actual former Warsaw Pact-built aircraft, including the AN-2 Colt, used for airborne and air assault insertions of OP-4 behind Blue 4 lines. It's used for aerial resupply and for reconnaissance. The MI-2 Hoplite used for reconnaissance, smoke, and minefield missions. The MI-8 HIP used for air assaults, resupply, attack aviation, and aerial sprayed chemical munitions. The MI-24 Hind, also known as the Hind D, used for attack aviation, and the UH-1 Huey, painted in desert camouflage. The OP-4 possesses significant air defense systems to include SA-14 teams, the ZSU-23-4, and the Greta, which replicates the actual radar signature of the SA-8 and the ZSU. During the op Force motorized infantry regiment's attack, it builds up to a thousand-man force with up to 30 BMPs and 20 T-62 tanks. Completing the op Force combined arms capability is an engineer company with two sapper platoons and one heavy equipment platoon. The OP-4 executes three missions in support of a typical JRTC rotation. These missions include conducting insurgency operations, attacking as a lead echelon Atlantican regiment, and defending fortified battle positions as an attrited battalion-sized force. During the insurgency phase of a rotation, the OP-4 primarily represents the Cortinian Liberation Front, or CLF. This is an insurgent organization operating inside the country of Cortina. It receives some critical logistics and training from Atlantican Special Operating Forces. The CLF is an umbrella organization that includes civilian dressed terrorists, Americans go home, and main force combat units. The Leesville Urban Group is a CLF terrorist organization that uses the cell concept. Its cells include a recon cell, a direct action cell, a logistics cell, and a PSYOP civil affairs cell. This civilian-dressed terrorist organization significantly tests the ability of Blue 4 units to conduct population and resource control. The round count. Roger that. So the allegation is going to be that we popped them. 60% of the intelligence gathered comes from this element. CLF reports that there was a platoon-sized element. The recon cells will provide detailed intelligence to the direct action cell and will conduct drive-by shootings, car bomb attacks, and other terrorist attacks against critical Blue 4 targets. The PSYOP civil affairs cell will attempt not only to win support for the CLF from the villagers and other civilians on the battlefield, but also to discredit the U.S. and Cortinian PSYOPs and civil affairs efforts. And from what I understand, they assassinated two of the, our local people. I had been, I'd heard a rumor about that yesterday. The 91st Assault Battalion is the CLF Main Force Combat Unit operating against the Blue Four. It's a battle-hardened, tough, insurgent force that's been conducting operations against the Cortinian security forces for years prior to the entry of United States forces into the conflict. 
thing is that we can't let the standards drop any lower than, than the maximum. The building blocks of the 91st Battalion and the CLF's successes are the OP4 tenets. You can't take a shortcut because a shortcut will get somebody killed. In order for the Blue Four to be successful, they must learn to deal with these basic tenets. These tenets include marksmanship, decentralized operations, battle drills, and field crafts. With marksmanship, the OP4 establishes high one-shot, one-kill standards in its training. Prior to going into combat, a soldier must hit four out of five targets stationary at 150 meters, four out of five targets moving at 100 meters, and four out of five targets at 50 meters at night. This is accomplished in both open and wooded terrain. This builds a deadly skill which the OP4 employs in its engagements. The next OP4 tenet is decentralized operations. During the insurgency phase, the OP4 operates in fire team and squad sized elements. These units are armed with a mission statement and a clear intent. These junior leaders know what's expected of them. This allows them to make immediate decisions, enabling them to stay ahead of the Blue Force decision making process. I got four personnel down, one six. What's the deal on the air? The scheme of maneuver used during insurgency includes three phases. In phase one, the OP-4 infiltrates into their area of operations, establishes patrol bases, emplaces and overwatches minefields, builds their caches, and conducts reconnaissance. If contact is made, the OP-4 will break that contact. By the end of this phase, the OP-4 attempts to have identified all critical Blue 4 targets in the area of operations. A typical list of high priority targets for this phase are the Brigade TOC, the Q-36 counter battery radar, the aviation assembly area, the brigade supply area, battalion talks, air defense assets, and the FARP. The OP-4 then transitions into phase two operations. These operations include sniping and fire team sized ambushes. In order to preserve its force, the OP-4 will break contact if it sustains a single casualty. It will only re-engage on terms favorable to the OP-4. Mortars will be used primarily to break contact. Finally, the CLF will conduct its Phase 3 operations where it masses to squad level to hit key Blue 4 targets. The CLF orchestrates these phases in an attempt to disrupt Blue 4 operations and to prepare the way for the upcoming Atlantican invasion. The third OP-4 tenet is battle drills. The CLF uses three highly effective battle drills, including breaking contact, the baited ambush, and the box attack. In the baited ambush, the OP-4 selects ambush positions, then sends a small force to make contact with the Blue 4. This element then withdraws while the Blue 4 pursues them into the ambush. The OP-4 specifically establishes ambush positions that allow them flank and rear shots. In the box attack, the OP-4 makes chance contact with the Blue 4. While maintaining contact, the trail elements of the OP-4 move to the rear flanks, both left and right of the Blue 4, thereby engaging them from three sides. Once the OP-4 causes casualties, they may break contact. As the Blue 4 conducts casualty evacuation, the OP-4 calls in mortar fires, then moves back in to snipe and harass. This leads to a typical exchange ratio of seven to 12 Blue 4 casualties for every OP-4 casualty. Using these tactics, the OP-4 keeps the Blue 4 on the defensive while they maintain freedom of movement in their sector. The last OP-4 tenet is field craft. The OP-4 soldier will spend in excess of 200 days a year in the field. Thus, they know their environment and have a clear understanding of what soldier load they'll need to accomplish their mission. The OP-4 will infiltrate into a sector with heavy rucks, but then cache those rucksacks and operate only out of their butt packs. This allows the lightly equipped OP-4 to use maximum stealth and to initiate most of the contacts against the heavily burdened Blue 4. The OP-4 normally operates in two company sectors, each with two platoons against a Blue 4 Brigade Task Force. Supporting each company normally are two 82 millimeter mortars, two SA-14 teams, and a company supply point. 
At the battalion level, the Op 4 feels a dismounted tack and a battalion supply point. The JRTC battlefield is highly realistic. Two examples of this are the Op 4 communications and resupply signatures. In the first example, all Op 4 communications are unsecured FM. This allows the Blue 4 to intercept and exploit those transmissions. In the second example, the Op 4 must tactically resupply itself. Every mine, mortar round, SA-14 round, or other type of supply must be brought in tactically. This process starts when the first Blue 4 recon element enters the box. Op 4 aircraft bring supplies to LZs close to the battalion supply point. These supplies are picked up using all-terrain vehicles or captured Humvees, then pushed to company supply points where they're transloaded and pushed by ATVs or captured Humvees to platoon release points. From these release points, the supplies are backpacked to squad and fire team caches. This resupply signature is susceptible to interdiction by the Blue Four. This often forces the Op Four to try to take supplies off poorly secured Blue Four convoys. Turning to the next phase of a JRTC rotation, the Op Four conducts its regimental attack. The Op 4 is the lead echelon regiment of the attacking Atlantican Army. The Atlanticans use a CLF, or soft stay-behind force, to conduct reconnaissance and to disrupt Blue 4 defensive preparations. 100 meters past checkpoint 6, break. Bradley, overwatch in position, break. 36 to 48 hours prior to the attack, division reconnaissance moves along likely attack routes. The night prior to the attack, Regimental Recon moves along the attack routes, completing the Op 4 picture of the battlefield by reporting Blue 4 disposition, obstacles, and obstacle bypasses. Bypass. The Op 4 Regiment consists of two motorized battalions, each at 60% strength, and a mechanized battalion reinforced with tanks. Several hours behind the Regimental Recon, the motorized forces detruck and attack dismounted to seize key terrain and choke points that facilitate the attack of the mechanized forces the following morning. Night, sweet friends. The mechanized and armor forces then attack through positions seized by the dismounted infantry onto the regiment's final objectives. The Op 4 uses a combination of synchronized terrorist attacks, air assaults, or airborne assaults to hit key Blue 4 command and control, artillery, or other targets to disrupt the Blue 4's conduct of the defense. High priority targets for this phase are attack aviation, the brigade talk, battalion talks, artillery assets, the Q-36, armor assembly areas, and volcano mopums. Okay, good job. The last phase of a JRTC rotation is the defense. Here, the scenario is the Atlantican Army is in retreat. A force is left to defend fortified positions along the trail network the Blue Four needs to conduct a ground pursuit of retreating Atlantican forces. The Op 4 again employs the ever-present stay-behind force that reports on Blue Four assembly areas and preparations for the attack. Along a regimental screen line, the regiment uses a series of mounted OPs and dismounted security patrols. The Op 4 typically employs two company-sized battle positions in the FTX box. One position may be mechanized, while the other is a motorized position. These positions are usually reinforced with a tank section. The Op 4 places great emphasis on effective counter-reconnaissance. They take one-third of the battle position forces and place them forward in combat outposts. These outposts have two tasks. First, the stripping away of any Blue 4 recon assets, and second, the disruption through ambushes and calls for artillery of Blue 4 elements infiltrating to the objective area. Around the battle positions themselves, the Op 4 also has OPs and counter-recon forces patrolling at the line of sight limit around the objectives. Each battle position will plan local dismounted and mounted counterattacks in an attempt to take the initiative away from the attacking Blue 4. At the regimental level, there's a small combined arms reserve. This force is typically employed against the Blue 4 armor main efforts flanks and rear. It'll conceal itself and maintain radio listening silence until given the command to launch. 
In all phases of a JRTC rotation, the OP-4 aggressively resources and executes deception operations. During insurgency operations, they'll employ false supply bases and deception radio traffic. During the attack, they'll use false overlays and other methods to confuse the Blue Four as to where the main attack will come. He took off right in the middle. And lastly, during the defense, the OP-4 will build false assembly areas, deception battle positions, and reverse slope defenses to prevent the Blue Four from synchronizing their combat power. The JRTC World Class OP-4 is a tough, highly skilled opponent that will find and exploit Blue Four deficiencies. They'll drive home those hard lessons learned that forge U.S. Army units into the most capable, highest trained forces in the world. Success for the OP-4 soldier is the learning at all levels by U.S. Army soldiers and their enhanced ability to survive and prevail on the next battlefield.